Right. I think um, the Tibetan modern art really began with the um, artworks that were produced by uh, Gendu Chumbe. Right? I think in early 20th century, <coughs> he was the first one to really uh, paint something that is um, not a traditional uh, way of looking at a subject matter. So he was painting things like um, Indians taking bath. Um, when he was traveling in India, he's tra he traveled for 12 years in India and was studying Indian culture, Indian uh, contemporary culture of that time. So um, he was also a Thanka painter, also started signing his work, which not many traditional Tibetan artists would do. Um, so I think this is the first uh, wave of uh, Tibetan modern art that began, I believe. And after that, uh, then uh, probably Amdu Champasetela. He was the one, I think, the first one to uh, go out of Tibet in China, in Beijing, and studied um, the uh, oil painting and all the stuff. And then he painted um, Benji Rumbuche, you know, uh, the four, His Holiness 14 Dalai Lama. He also made lots of mural works. And then slowly I think it moves on and um, maybe Jingme Tile, their art movement called Cotton Canvas Art Movement. And then slowly, uh, Sweet Tea House, you have that first uh, uh, contemporary art gallery. Mm -hmm. uh, and then Gindu Chumbe Art Guild. And then, you know, so this, this I think has been the, uh, a slow and steady, you know, uh, up climbing of uh, Tibetan contemporary art. I think uh, what we have right now is a very, diluted, very, um, when you compare it with the history of Tibetan art, the kind of respect that the um, Tibetan artists experience uh, during the old times has all been declined due to our political status right now. Um, Tibet being colonized by China, now what you have is um, not much of a awareness about Tibetan um, contemporary art, the concept, you know. Even the word itself, when you uh, think about it, the art uh, in Tibetan language, it, it means gutsel. And uh, it's a combination of two words. Gu means um, magic or illusion. And cell means skill, dexterity, you know, craftsmanship, all these things. So when you combine the two, it's more like a magical skill. That's the definition of art in Tibetan language. And now, uh, in present day, uh, when we meet within the Tibetan society I'm talking about, um, whether in Tibet or uh, out of Tibet, most of the time you realize that people are looking at artwork from a craftsmanship point of view or the skill um, or the uh, mostly to do with the, how much skill the artist has you know whereas we have lost the magic <laughs> right. so um, even one of the um, recently they had a book translated by uh, I think, I believe an American guy who translated Shagaba's book on Tibetan uh, political history, in which uh, on the first volume, he talks about, um, he categorizes Tibetan traditional art as craftsmanship. But it's in Tibetan language, that means sell. But you really, in the past, there's a very broader meaning of what art is. And now it has really reduced. And um, 
Also, when um, I think the, when Chinese invaded uh, Tibet at that time, the Chinese government used art as a tool to uh, brainwash the uh, Tibetans. You know, they used theater. They actually, when they first um, imprisoned all these uh, individuals, they have them. Uh, they they checked and see if some people knew uh, how to paint, some people knew how to sing, if they are into um, they knew any musical instruments, and then they categorized them, and then they used those Tibetans uh, into uh, propagating their ideology. You know, brainwashing the locals. So this is how they really used art as. Um, creating this propaganda of uh, what Tibetan society used to be and stuff like that. And then slowly when in exile, I think when uh, Tibetan exile government couldn't um, revive everything, they may, I think they mainly focused on the uh, Mendri tradition of uh, Tibetan Thangka painting. Yeah. And, um, but there, there, there are many, but not all, they couldn't uh, support all of those uh, our traditions and all. So, um, but at the but at the same time, right now, I feel that uh, quite a lot is happening within the Tibetan um, contemporary art world, where uh, many artists all over the world uh, are uh, creating some very interesting work, uh, talking about their past, their present, you know, and the. Uh, the unpredictability of the future also. So, yeah, I think it's an interesting phase at the moment. So I think our present, um, I think our biggest question for our um, generation is how to work between the idea of um, preservation and innovation. So those two somehow sometimes feel that um, the, uh, when you pay too much attention to the preservation of culture, it tends to yield um, a, a smaller space for innovation. But then I think um, we could create that balance where we are preserving at the same time, um, creating something new. and. Um, one way I feel that uh, we could achieve that in art is really um, looking back at the history of Tibet, looking back at the tradition of Tibet, and then bringing something out of it. And when you create a work, it would seem like you have evolved from the thousands of years of Tibetan tradition, so that you are within the historical context of that tradition and um, also with regards to bringing um, more artists, uh, I think it has to do on many levels. Um, the first thing would be um, to have a true uh, cultural exchange or a cultural dialogue. At the present, when I look at um, the situation right now, what's happening with Tibetan culture and all. I don't think it's a cultural dialogue. It's more of a monologue. What is happening is everything that is in Tibetan um, uh, literature or Buddhist philosophy, that this, this, these books are all been translated into foreign language. Whereas the f foreign um, literature or philosophy or any kind of uh, intellectual disciplines has not been translated back into Tibetan language. So, those who are good in Tibetan language, those who are, um, who want to do something different, doesn't have that uh, uh, Western education on their lap. And then it also implicitly discourages them from being very good in Tibetan language because there's no use to it. You know, so they, I think first thing is to change this change this um, uh, unproportionately um, uh, aligned uh, uh, model of cultural exchange. I think if one book is translated into foreign language, I think it will be nice to have 
another book of that culture being translated in Tibetan language. So first thing I think is that kind of problem we have. Um, in Tibet there's a tradition uh, where uh, we call Lotsawa uh, Lerwa. Lotsawa is a, uh, in the word itself it means Zamlingi uh, Miklawarwa. Meaning that the person who brings the world's knowledge into your own culture, that's called Lotsawa. But now we don't have that. We, we, we have probably one or two. Right now, these are like the inverse of Lotsawa. Right now, what we have is Zamlingi Chetu Mikrdoa, Zamlingi Mikremdoa. So what they do is they're looking at Tibetan culture. Or they're saying, oh, this, this, this scripture is nice. This idea is nice. Let's translate it into foreign language, which is very good, you know. But at the same time, we also have to. If you really want to preserve a Tibetan culture, then you cannot do that by uh, stagnating it, you know, freezing the culture that we have. It has to evolve and you can do that only by translating the other works of uh, art, other philosophical intellectual disciplines into Tibetan language. And then those writers, those intellectual um, uh, community or individuals would use that and bring something new you know so first thing is really to balance that we don't have that most of the time it's only cultural monologue not a dialogue i mean to, in order to have really really interesting artists is to have somebody who can really give 100% of what he is you know lodang lagrahanza in tibetan words <laughs> you need somebody who would really give up anything for, for making art, you know. And in order to do that, I've noticed that most of the artists in exile, you know, most of them, they don't have parents with them, actually. So this sense of gives the idea of if you have somebody who cares about you, then they see that art is not, not the best choice for you. So, into the redwa. So, if you have a, um, that's why I, most of the artists that I know, I and then I start talking to them, and yeah, they're not, they don't, they're not, they're not very close to them. If they have a family, they're not very close to them. They're not, um, uh, or they don't have parents with them, you know. Um, so, and then they 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 have become individual. They're starting to, you know discover their own potential. But most of the time, I think many Tibetans, they don't even realize that they have the, all those uh, potential. But, and then all of a sudden, they were told to study this, study that, you know, and then they, they live their life in that way. So, yeah, I think, it, um, I think first thing is to really uh, realize that how important art is, you know. Basically, we, we, we say that, oh, Tibetan struggle for the past has been this, this, this. We have to do something different. This is what we say. So you're looking, the only, so you're asking people to look at the problem in a different perspective. Look at the solution and is there a possibility of uh, creating a new kind of solution? And that's art, actually. Art is about looking at the same thing in a different perspective. But when you in an academic way, in an education system, if you're really um, discouraging art, and at the same time you want people to look at it in a different way, you can't have both. <laughs> you have to encourage, you know, you need more artists, I think. Gandhi is an artist, actually, you know. Dalai Lama is an artist, you know. Artists in, in the purest form, where, where their whole, their very life becomes an art, you know, their walk becomes in poetry. So, um, uh, if you really want artists, then you, you need to, uh, uh, you need to breed more individuals, you know, you need to breed um, more, um, more, uh, more stupid people, you know, they're very good sometimes. <laughs> <laughs>